your nails Ah, your nails Ah, ah <laughs> Oje, oje, baby. Don't fight those. Don't eat. So hello guys, today we are at PetSmart. I love animals and I try my best to sort of volunteer at animal shelters or help animals in whatever way I can. And uh, back in Singapore, I used to volunteer at SPCA and here I volunteer at Toronto Cat Rescue. So which is inside PetSmart and that's the reason why we are here. So every Wednesday uh, from 6.30 to 9, I have a volunteer duty uh, in PetSmart. There's a small section where, you know, they keep all the stray cats, uh, cats who are injured or cats who are, you know, the owners have given up on them. Everyone would be here so that whoever visits PetSmart can actually have a look at them and adopt them if needed. Today's video, I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to let you know what are the different things I do and we'll meet some cats as well. So let's go. We have four cats over here and all of them are getting really excited to see me. So we'll open them one by one, take them out and then it will be time for us to wash. Let's take them out. Hi baby. Hi baby. Hi. 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 That's our cat number one. And her name is Ursa. And she's so cute. Yeah. Okay, we'll put you down now. Now it's the second one. Okay. Hi. She is super excited to go. There she is. Okay. What's your name, baby? Here we have the third cat. She's a little shy. Oops. What's your name, baby? Taxi. <laughs> what is that? Taxi. What happened? Oh, oh <laughs> Viking. Come here. Separate. Come here. Come here. You come here. We have our fourth one whose name is Buddy. So Buddy is 12 years old and he was here last week as well. And he's a little shy. He doesn't look like, but he is. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't really like to come out of the cage. So what I'll do is just keep the cage open in case he wants to come out. So there are the four cats. And you can see that I am already in chaos, <laughs> trying to control all of them. So, uh, I'm going to soon prepare their dinner and uh, I'll see you back after I'm done. Hey, hey, look at that. Don't fight, bros. Rookie, come here. Don't fight. Don't fight, don't fight. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to lock this door. So that they don't fight. Hello, come here. So, why are they fighting? They are not really fighting. There's only one cat who's fighting. She doesn't really like other cats. So whenever uh, some other cats try to go near her, she will sort of smack them and do the car thing, which is to basically stay away. And uh, these two curious cats over here, it seems like they still want to go and be with her. Okay, so we are going to discuss lunch, dinner with this lady over here. Okay. So you see, these are the cages and these are the cats. So if you focus over there, you see wet food over here for them. Uh, their preferences are given. So who likes to eat what and what should we feed who in what quantity is written over there. So I just have to follow that and feed them accordingly. Okay, so 
So as per the instructions, we have been told that for the two black cats that are there, we will be feeding them uh, this face tool, savory, turkey, something. And for the other two big cats, we will be feeding them this container. So one fourth of the container, which is like uh, one fourth, like basically divide this into four parts. And the remaining we will keep it in the fridge. So let's do that. What is this grass over here? So basically, cat and dogs and all the animals, they eat certain type of grass uh, whenever they are having stomach issues or whenever they need some help with the digestion. So that's the reason why I think someone has just given us, donated the grass for us and uh, we can let the cats eat it and you know, they will just vomit it out or they will shit it out and it will make them feel better. Another part of my job is also to wash the dishes um, after I'm done feeding them and all the other dishes that have been uh, gathered. So what I'll do is i just try to wipe off the excess food bits so that it doesn't become chaotic when I wash. And I'll just put them in the bucket and collect them and at the end of the day go away. So let's go feed the cats and food. Yep. Just like us, ego for food. We have one over here, so we're gonna feed and we're eating it. So, I sure I hear dogs barking on the other side, a lot of them. What's going on? So um, the, the dogs that you hear basically are here for dog training. So just beside us, uh, PetSmart offers like dog training for new dog owners or uh, let's say those dogs who are not really listening, what can be done. So uh, they are training and the time of volunteer are usually the same one. So there's always a lot of noise, dog noises. Um, some cats are definitely used to it and they don't bother it. Some cats are very scared of uh, the dog barking and sometimes they just go inside the cage and try to hide and find some problems. So that's one thing that is it. So you see here, these are basically all the daily tasks that we are in charge of. And we are supposed to, whenever we are done with the task, we are supposed to take it off. I'm just going to put it off here. Okay, and uh, so in my shift, the task that I need to do would be firstly to feed the cat's dinner, uh, secondly to replenish any cage food or water. So as you can see, each cage has like food and water that is already provided for them. So I need to sort of like refill it if it is needed. Uh, before going, I need to cage the cats, make sure they're all inside, so that morning when whoever person comes, they can bring them out. Of the house. Uh, apart from that, I have to, like I mentioned before, clean the dishes, like whatever dishes that are left, like all these food that they eat or the water, so maybe the water that is there inside in the other room, I have to wash it. Um, I have to clean the litter, so again, we have a communal litter down on the other side, and uh, we have to, so I have to sort of wash it, clean it, sanitize it, and put it back, because the cats will be in the cages all day, so they won't really be using the communal litter. Uh, I also have to sweep the floor because I'm the last uh, person to align the pet smart players. So nobody would be coming after me. So I need to just sweep the floor, you know, remove all the dirt, the hair, cat hair and everything like that. As well as human hairs. And finally uh, mop the floor. So this would ensure that uh, it's always like, the room is always sanitized and clean. Uh, apart from that, we also have a garbage bin. So we we'll put a lot of like leftover food or any rubbish, papers, litter, and everything like that. So we have to clear it again. And of course, put back a new bag so that the next person coming, the next day can use it. 
so these are part of the task and of course apart from that a very very important task is to play with the cats try to keep them as entertained as possible if they are like quiet they are shy uh, i try my best to bring them out and make them play play with me or if they if they can't get along then i try my best to make sure that they do get along <laughs> Yes, I yeah. Each cat have their own personality, and uh, you don't really know what they are going to do when. You just have to figure it out in the game. So. Of course, they are the boss. So the nails are very sharp. Right? Yes. What do you want? Come on, we'll go the other side now. We'll play there. Come on. Why are you eating her food? Is this what it is like having kids? Okay. Where is your food? Did you eat your food? No. You are eating her food. Why? Right? Bro, bro, why are you unnecessarily eating the food? I don't even know what to say. Buddy, do you know? Can't you play with Buddy? Buddy! Let me see what's up with this guy. He doesn't want to come out. He's probably like an old guy. He's sick of life. <laughs> Hello. Mister. Don't you want to come out? Yo. Hey! <laughs> He just say, eh. okay, fine, no disturbing, leave you alone. All right, so once we are done feeding them the dinner, I try to play with each and every cat. Uh, sometimes, you know, like when cats get along, it becomes much more easier for me to play with all of them at the same time. However, in situations like this, where they just hate each other so much, we have to sort of give, look at them, look at them. So we have to... Uh, no entry. So we have to sort of uh, try to play with each and every one of them to ensure that you know not one is given too much attention, uh, and we have to keep them active. So about eight twenty, I'm gonna stop playing with them, and then I'm gonna go and start doing the other chores like washing the dishes and cleaning their cat sand, which is right underneath. So um, I have to wash it, sanitize it, and ensure that uh, it's clean. Yeah. So the rest of the time, I guess we're just going to show you some clips of us playing with the cats, their behavior, their characteristics, and stop them from fighting with each other. Why you don't like other cats? She's far away, don't come. Alright, so let me just uh, give you a bit of an introduction about this place and what are the things we have over here. So, first of all, as you can see, we have like four cages. Cage 1, we have numbered them. Cage 1, cage 2, cage 3 and cage 4. Uh, the bottom cages we will try to a bit distracting but okay mm. the bottom cages we'll try to uh, keep kittens that come in um, and the top cages we will try to put uh, the older cats who are older than one year old let's say uh, of course when you do not have kittens or you have too many cats we just try to change uh, the positions accordingly um, 
Yeah. And inside the cage, you can see that it's a long cage. So this part of the cage, one cage has two different portions. So this portion over here is usually the glass portion where uh, the outside people can see the cats as well as the cats would be able to see what's outside. Uh, there are like a few things like the cats can sit here, sit there. They also have a cat bed, uh, which they Oops. usually sit on. Oh, sorry. And sleep. <laughs> and uh, sleep and stuff uh, we have provided them like some hard food which is there we also have water there is a hole here so through which the cats can go to the other side this one on top as well okay so this part of the cage is the bottom is usually for litter for them to do their pee pee and poo poo and the top part is for them to sleep uh, sometimes some of the cats they are very reserved and they don't like to sit where people can see them so this is like the hideout spot where they usually sleep um, the blankets of course we will change it from uh, time to time like almost like every day not almost but every day just to make sure that uh, the cats get clean blankets and we also need to clean shit uh, or pee that they have done uh, during our shift so that it doesn't stink and it's also hygienic uh, other than that, I think I would just show you guys this sheet. So this sheet is where we have uh, different comments that we write. So this is cage one. This is for Arsa. And uh, what happens is we write down the date and we have like different time slots available. So during this, we try to mark whether the cat has eaten or not, whether the cat drank, uh, whether we saw like any urine or stools in the litter box and any comments that we have like for example trying to pick unnecessary fight with the other cat or try to keep the cats away so that they don't fight or like any positive things like the cat is very friendly she loves uh, cuddles she likes to be uh, to, to play with the laser and laser pointer and stuff like that so this board over here uh, has instructions for uh, the volunteers uh, like I have shown this earlier where I have to look for my shift like I have the closing shift which is from 6.30 to 9pm and I have to tick off all the tasks that are meant for me to be done. There are also other instructions that we have to take note like we have to wash the dishes in the sink however the litter box we have to wash it in some other place which is like meant for janitors and stuff so we sort of wash our like litter box and stuff the more dirtier stuff over there uh, other than that there are like contact details of who we can contact if we have any queries or emergencies uh, over here she blinks when i blink <laughs> uh, so this is like a separate room that we have which is this door usually when the cats can't get along we try to close this door some of the cats are there and some of the cats are there this is called their enrichment room where they have various things to play with as you can see we have a lot of toys for them which are like donated uh, by people which are some things that we bought and we try to find different toys different cats likes to play with different types of toys so we try out which one they like and we try to stick to that uh, we have some sticks over here which is linked to some toys which you can play with for so this side this is cat towers so we have one and two so it's just for cats to play with this thing over here that you see and this one over here are the scratch pads where the uh, cats can usually scratch and try to remove all the urge in their nails. Um, of course the dens are for them to sit and below they can sit below. This was supposed to be a scratch pad but sometimes they really feel comfortable sitting on it which is what this lady is doing. Decided to jump on him and sit there. So, how do you feel, Sahil? Is this the first time a cat <laughs> has jumped on you? 
Watch your nails, boy. Ah, your nails. Ah, ah. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh, she started hugging him. Oh my god, this is so cute. Oh, Jay, oh, Jay, baby. Look at him. <laughs> oh my god, just look at this. He gives me so much joy. Right? Right? Oh, yes. 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 This one thing I actually wanted to say that, you know, when I met Sahil, he wasn't at all comfortable with not just cats but with any animals. But now you see, he is very, very comfortable and I just feel so good seeing him with animals, interacting with animals and talking to them. It just makes me feel so amazing. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> yeah, he's handling them much better. So all of them have gone to sleep, take a break, rest. This one is the only one who's very active still. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to just mark uh, some things like for example, who ate, who, uh, whether I've seen them drinking water, whether I've seen them uh, going for potty or taking a piss. Uh, so for most of them, actually all four of them did eat, but they didn't finish their food. However, I'm still going to take it because uh, you know, they did, they're not having trouble eating or whatsoever. So let me just take it. So here it is. Today is the 21st night between 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm just, just going to put it. I didn't really see uh, I didn't really see Buddy drinking water so I'm just going to leave it blank. I have not seen Buddy uh, pee or shit so I'm just going to leave it blank as well. Uh, and some comments is maybe I'll just put like actually I don't have to put anything because most of them knows that he doesn't come out that's why they will only write like whenever he comes out we would just write okay how many times did he come out so right now buddy is just inside he hasn't even come out once so i'm just gonna not write anything so same goes for the rest i just marked a tick for all of them who had eaten i did see uh arsa drinking some water so i'm just gonna mark a tick there and she is very very cuddly i have not seen anyone write that yet so i'm just writing that uh this helps to improve their description in their adoption profile uh, things like cuddly and stuff is usually what people like uh, and that's one of the selling point not selling point but one of the point that why they would go and adopt a cat so I'm just putting it there yeah. so now I am going to start wrapping up because it seems like it's already going to be 8 and I have to leave by nine so i have one hour to tidy up the place wash the dishes clean the litter sweep and mop so i'm gonna get going and start doing that just a curious thing I guess I'm gonna leave the water there. So now I'm on my way to wash the dishes. So what I'll do is usually whatever dishes I need to wash will be in this bucket. Uh, this is a sponge that you can take from the dish washing place and I have a bit of solution. So what I'll do is instead of taking the entire bottle with me, I'll just uh, pour some here which will be good enough for me to wash these uh, dishes. So, oh.
so I'm just trying to refill. So we have a jug filled with water, uh, which is taken from the pantry. So I'll just refill the bowls so that they have plenty of water to drink. So now I'm going to go and clean the sand. So I'll be right back. Okay. So for those who do not know what sand I'm talking about, it's nothing but the cat's land. So this is where usually for dogs, you know, they have to be brought up to pee or poop. However, for cats, it is not as well. You can just get a container and then put the sand in. They would just pee and shishi inside it. So once it's done, you can just take out, scoop out the urine or the shit and then throw it away and continue to use the sand until it gets uh, really dirty. So I have to sweep the floor and mop the floor but the cats are making it quite difficult for me to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cage them inside so that it's easier for me to sweep as well as mop. So in they go one by one. First is okay. Time to go inside the cage. Oh. Go. Go in. Go in. Oh. Stay there. Stay there. Time to go inside. Think, Kendra? I know you want to come out. Okay, so now it's time for me to mop. So I'm going to use this disinfectant and the spray first. And then I have some water and mop where I'm just going to put it. It's 9 p.m. and I'm out of PetSmart now. I would be heading home soon. I really enjoy coming here and I do look forward to coming here every week and trying to, you know, help out with the cats, help out with the adoptions, try to clean up after them and sort of help in whatever way I can. So if you are in Toronto and you are interested in adopting a cat, I would leave a link of um, Toronto Cat Rescue in the description so that you can go ahead and look at the cats available for adoption. Also I keep uh, telling people, telling my friends and telling everyone around that it is very important for us to adopt. Like you saw earlier throughout the videos, the cats had like so much love to give. Even when I helped out in SPCA, the dogs were so friendly and they had so much love to give so all we need to do is sort of to give them a chance to show the love they have and also one more thing to take note even in adoptions i usually have people coming in and they will be asking me like how old the cat is like is it a kitten we are specifically looking for a kitten or we are specifically looking for this breed i think that is something that i would also try to avoid because as compared to kittens, the older cats need us more. Like you saw earlier, Buddy, uh, a senior cat, has been here for around two weeks now and he has not been getting adopted. It's really sad to see them like this. And uh, if we could, we would definitely uh, go ahead and adopt him. But we can't at the moment. So if you can, please do so. Give them a chance and see the magic that happens after you do so till then we'll meet and at the next video please take care of yourself be happy stay happy bye bye